Good morning, I'm Cherie House, and I live in Knoxville, Tennessee, where we always do something different. Today, we're gonna to be working on two favorite pies that my family have enjoyed for years, grandmother's recipes. Um, because we're serving so many people at the reception, we're looking up to about 200 people. We're going to reduce those pies to tarts so that everybody can have a, a, a bite if they want to. What a heaping tablespoon is, because a lot of people don't understand that. We're used to leveling off. So a heaping tablespoon means more than the tablespoon. So we need six of those. The basis for any good cream pie is flour, milk, and sugar. Four, five, six, okay? There's a lot of thickness there, but it's needed. The next thing we need to do is we need to separate two eggs, and we're going to use the egg yolks, but we're not going to use the whites. So you want to separate your egg yolks. And I'm going to show you a little something different. Um, we're used to seeing people separate the eggs and temper the eggs and put the hot mix in the egg mix and the eggs so they don't scramble, but that's not really necessary in this recipe. So all we have here is the two egg yolks, three tablespoons heaping of flour, three tablespoons of, of cocoa, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. So what we're going to do is we're going to use two cups of milk. So like I said, the basis to any um, good cream pie is flour, milk, sugar, and eggs. And I'm going to pour two cups of milk. I went to Italy a few years ago, and this is the only milk they had. And they didn't serve it cold. They served it just like this. Yuck. All right. We have poured the milk in there. And as of right now, that's all we need in this recipe until we get to the very end. And we do all of that. We do all of that without having to measure anything. I've made this come to a boil. Anyway, you see how thick it is? It needs to be that thick so you can cut it with a knife. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to add the butter, two tablespoons of butter. This gives it a real richness. Two tablespoons of butter and I use, um, and the vanilla, I'm using clear vanilla because I'm also using that in my um, other recipe for my meringue. So I'm gonna use this, teaspoon of vanilla. Okay, that's all done. So all we have to do is stir this up, incorporate the butter and the vanilla and let it sit for a few minutes while we make our tart shells. Okay, and it looks just a little thick to me, so I'm gonna add just a little more milk. And you can you can add milk. You can't add a flour after the fact, but you can add milk. Good point. See now, see how creamy it is? Okay, that's a perfect pie filling. Okay, so we're gonna remove this from the heat right now and we're done for a few seconds. I normally do pie crust from scratch. But there are times when doing that doesn't make sense, and this is one of those times. When you're making pie tarts and you're making for a lot of people, they don't really care how the pie crust tastes. In my situation, I need to get as many as I can done in a quick amount of time. So I'm using store-bought pie crust that's already rolled out. I just have to roll it out a little bit further. It's real easy. And we're just going to roll it just a little thinner because I don't like a thick crust that's not delicate. You know, if, you, if you're eating a pie crust and it's all pie crust and, and the tart has very little in it because the crust is so thick, it's not really something that's very desirable in your mouth. So, there it is. Spread this out just a little bit. As thick, thin as I can get it without making it tear, which is why I like these store-bought pie crust for this. Homemade is great, but it's not always necessary. 
So I'm gonna show you two different methods. You can use something like this, like a tart, tart shell to cut these out, or you can use the hillbilly method and use a lid off of a container. Both of them work. Okay. So I'm gonna use both of them for this case. So we're gonna cut out, I'm gonna to try to get at least seven uh, tart shells out of this one pie crust. So you can tell if you already know anything about these pie crust, how, how much money you can save by doing it this way. Okay, so there's one. We're gonna use this now. You put a little flour on it, and it'll keep it from sticking. And we're gonna see how this, how this fits size-wise. Now, what we do is we take a muffin pan. Um, it's not easy to get them inside, but they turn out perfectly if you turn the pan over and you grease the outside. A little bit of spray, just like you would do to an inside of a pan. I spray it on the outside because they will stick, and this will prevent that. So we're simply going to, let's, let's go ahead and cut a few of them out. Very easy. You can see how thin they really are. And we're going to try to get at least seven out of this. I think that's pretty impressive if you can get seven out of here. I think we're going to do it. Oops. Yep, good enough. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's even better. I think that's the best I've done yet. So now what we're gonna take this, we're gonna lay these over the back of these muffin beans and kind of mold them however you want them. You can put them in kind of close, which puts them more like this, or you can let them fan out a little bit on the edges. But this is just a really easy way of getting a pie shell, a, pie a tart shell, really reasonably priced. Um, quickly because you can do these in a matter of minutes. You can run to the store and get a pie crust if you have to. I checked online and the prices to buy these, uh, first of all, they're, this is not the size they are. So uh, they're either way too big or way too small. But when you're serving several desserts, this is one way for them to, to have one and sample it and still be able to try the other desserts without going overload on sugar. And I, I like for them to not be perfect because then they look like they're homemade. People don't have to question. And in, in the stores, they all look more like more like this one, and they all look the same. So we want to try to avoid that. If you're going to all this trouble, you want somebody to know you did it. We're gonna use this one made from the um, crimp tart shell. It's a little bit smaller, but that's okay. We'll see what it turns out like. You can kind of decide what sizes you want after you make a batch. Okay, and I'm gonna stick these in the oven right now. Um, is it 350? One thing I'm gonna do is, is now that they're puffing up a little bit, I'm gonna poke them with a fork to keep them flat. So if you can reach your, you reach, you know, just reach in there and put in just one little poke, we'll make them flatten right back down. Cause we don't want them to get round. Okay, next we're going to go on to the coconut cream tart. So we're gonna start on the coconut filling. Um, one thing I want to show you is how to, um, measure a heaping tablespoon of flour and I showed you that in the chocolate one as well but this is a heaping tablespoon so it's not level it has to be a little higher than that and so in this bowl I already have six heaping tablespoons of flour one cup of sugar the next thing I'm going to do is like I did on my chocolate and add my eggs So now we've got flour, sugar, eggs. I'm going to again put just a pinch of salt in here because the coconut tends to get a little sweet. So I'm putting about a fourth a teaspoon of salt in there again. And again, I'm gonna put in two cups of milk. Actually, I'm gonna put in a little bit more because it's, a, it's such a sweet, 
cream filling that I can add a little more milk and make a, a little more volume um, for my tarts and not have to worry about it exchange in taste for volume. So I'm gonna put a little more, my two cups. I'm probably gonna put two cups and a half in there. The sugar makes, or the flour makes it so that it's easy to adapt. Okay, so about two and a half cups. I'm gonna turn on my heat again. Okay, and I'm going to, Again, get those eggs in there, beat quickly so that they don't scramble. And if all the ingredients right now are cold, so that doesn't, that's not gonna happen, but it could. and start clipping these tarts out we'll let them cool so they just pop right off so we're going to set them on this little doohickey right here see how delicate and thin they are they'll be easy to serve at the reception they won't need any serving utensils they will be people cutting cakes there but they won't need anything to to use to serve these people can get their own so it saves them a little time makes it easier we're just setting these out to cool right now. So, and once they're cool, we'll be ready to put our filling in. That's when the real, the real glory comes in because I wish you could smell it in here. It's heavenly. Just a little bit to make sure it's getting creamy. I'm gonna put in one teaspoon of. Vanilla, and again, this is clear vanilla because I like the clear vanilla when it's a light colored item that I'm putting it in because it keeps it clean, keeps it from pie. Okay, see how creamy that is? Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the coconut. I always get mad at my husband for this because it's got a self-sealing opening thing and he always opens it up and then you can't get back into it. That's just what I do. And I'm gonna use almost the whole bag on this because we only need to save a little bit for the top of the tart shells. So I'm gonna put, you could easily put two cups in here if you wanted to. I'm putting quite, quite a bit of coconut in there. Okay, and let's. Okay, so now we've got our pie crust done, our tart shells. Um, I've got a little embellishment that I have. If you can look at this, I've got little hearts cut out. Uh, all of the extra scraps that I had. Um, I put my daughter to work. We cut out little tiny hearts with little tiny cookie cutters. Um, and we're going to put these around the outside of the chocolate ones. So that's what we're doing for the wedding. So right now I'm gonna start filling. I'm gonna fill a few of each one. Let me see if we can get them all on here. Okay. All right, so we've got the coconut right here in the pan. So we're going to Start out with the coconut. And you just take your filling, and you can put a lot of filling in it because it's thick. It's not going anywhere. Nothing worse than a tart that's not filled properly. You get all crust. And if you look at the crust, you can see how thin it is. So it's gonna be delicate. It's not going to be real overpowering with crust and hard to, to, hard to chew. So we're gonna do about half and half. I'll do another coconut cream. Okay, so those are filled, and then after we get this all, these all filled, we're going to put meringue on the uh, coconut cream, and we're going to put whipping cream on the chocolate. Now, 
for all practical purposes at the wedding reception, I'm gonna have an ice bucket with a ready whip squirt whipping cream in it because it's not a, um, the building is a, it's a big beautiful barn, but it's not temperature controlled. So it would be hard to keep it cold. The whipping cream would weep if I didn't do that. So I'm gonna use, put this on the chocolate and I'm gonna overfill because everybody loves this chocolate. make our meringue and our whipping cream. So, but you can already see how beautiful they are. Now what I'm going to do with the chocolate ones, we're not putting the whipping cream on top of them for the reception. So I'm going to set these right on the edge. I'm gonna do it with a knife or a fork. We just set these on the edge like that and they'll be cute, be pretty for the wedding. Everybody, everybody knows you gotta have hearts at a wedding. This would be a good job for my daughter. Give her something to do while she's waiting on the wedding. And we will make these on Thursday ahead of time to be ready for the wedding. You can put them all the way around. Uh, what we're going to do is pipe a little bit on the edge and just stick them right on the edge. But you can see how pretty they can turn out that way. Okay, what we're going to do now is make the meringue for the um, marshmallow for the uh, coconut cream tarts. So what I did was took the egg whites that I used on the eggs while ago. You know, when we separated the eggs, I didn't use any egg whites. So we're going to put the egg whites in this bowl. We're going to whip our egg whites until about a medium heat. When they get stiff, they're a little too dry, so we're going to go into medium. Okay, if you look at the camera, at the uh, bowl, it's about the soft peak. So it's not real stiff, and it's a little bit glossy still, and that's where you need it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use, this is my, this is my favorite recipe for meringue. Marshmallow cream and egg whites, that's all it takes. So if you'll take your, take a spoon and spray it with a little bit of spray like that. You can get the marshmallow cream out easier. I could have lowered that bowl, couldn't I? People that don't like meringue usually love this meringue because it tastes more like marshmallows. Okay, uh, so we're gonna take this meringue, and this was just a few egg whites. Um, I usually do six egg whites to one jar of marshmallow cream, and it seems to be the perfect ratio, so. But we're doing such a small amount here, so I'm gonna take this whipping this cream, and I'm just gonna put it right on top. You could use a pastry, pastry bag if you wanted to. You can put it on here, just kinda haphazard. It really does not matter, they are not gonna care. because we're gonna take these and we're gonna bake them again with the coconut on top, just to brown it. So we gotta take them back off of this plate, but that's okay. Actually, the harder it is to eat, the longer it takes them to eat it. And they kind of enjoy that a little bit more. They feel like they're getting something for it. Now, I'm gonna take the leftover coconut that I had. And we're gonna sprinkle this on top. And we're gonna bake these in the oven. Just for a few minutes, the oven is still on. We're gonna put them on there just long enough to brown the coconut. Oops, and toast it. 
All right. Just a little bit. These have such a fantastic taste, and once somebody eats this recipe, they just there's no comparison. And that coconut will toast. We're gonna put these in there for just about five, ten minutes. You can see right now they're pretty and white. All right, so now we're going to add the whipped topping, the whipping cream to the chocolate tarts. And like I said, at the wedding, they'll be squirting their own whipping cream on. We're not doing that. The weather's just a little too warm maybe. We don't know what it's gonna be like, so we're gonna let them put their own on. There we go. So there we have the tarts that we're going to have for the wedding. You can see the size is perfect for eating one of these and another dessert. There we go. There you go, chocolate tarts and coconut cream tarts. So I hope you enjoyed what you saw today, and if you like it, uh, there'll be more. We're, we're going to do some more stuff, and it's going to be great desserts from the South. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, my God. That is incredible. Wow. Thank you, Jerry.